In today's video, we're looking at how to design this good looking mobile application that you see right here. And we're going to add some little animations to it to make it look beautiful. But before we continue, I have one very important information to share with you. The Xamarin Forms Masterclass is currently at over 75% discount. And I uh, would like to take advantage of that opportunity now. And one good thing about the Masterclass is that it is set up to help you take your Xamarin Forms to development to the next level. And as the Marine Forms evolve, I'll be adding new content to the Masterclass and you will also have access to it without paying any additional fee. So I want you to pause this video now and click on the link in the description below uh, to register and take advantage of that discount before it is over. The discount will be over in the next 24 hours. So do that right now before we continue. All right, so let's get started. All right, so I have Shasta 2019 open here and some of the things that I've done is uh, to update Xamarin Forms to the uh, latest version. So at this time, so Xamarin Forms is 4.8.0.1687. Uh, Make sure that you're having this latest version. And also, uh, in the app.xaml.cs, I've decided to set uh, these flags, I set this ships experimental flag and the brush experimental flag, and also set uh, the main page to a new uh, navigation page. And another thing I've done is to uh, bring in the asset that we're going to use. So I have uh, uh, some images right here that I will need. So, and uh, lastly, uh, I have a V model for my page. So I've just created just one V model uh, for the main page uh, that has a class called Peak, uh, as implementation of uh, base V model for I notification property change, I notify property change, and uh, then I'm binding the value of this. Uh, let me just let me see if i can bring this a uh, little bit down like this all right so uh these are just information uh these are just information about uh, uh the peak we want to bind this to, to our, our view so that as we are designing we'll be able to see it so these are just uh dummy data in the view model all right so let's get to our page so this is the this is what we have uh, i'm going to remove this uh, first uh uh, firstly, I want to remove the navigation bar. So navigation page dot as uh, as navigation bar. I set it to false. And then the next thing I want to do. So I've saved that. Now you can see alt reload picking up there. So I want to set the binding context of this page. Content page dot binding context, not background binding context so i want to set it to the view model so let's call it vm uh, the name is the main view model let's give it a name x name is vm so i'm going to resolve this uh, namespace uh, so that i can bring this for us so like i said this view model is what i've created here you have to create your own the view model inside this folder i'm binding this value too all right so once that this is done now uh, let's look at the whole one to design so this is the page this is the page i want to design this is the first page and this is the second page looking at this now we can divide this page into three uh, the first part is this part the second part is from this image uh, to this part and the third part is this side here okay. so we have a grid that's going to be uh three uh cool three rows and at the back here, we have uh, a box view uh, that is a that is a gradient, as you can see. So we're going to have a gradient uh, at the background. All right, so let's get it uh, done. So firstly, we have a grid, uh, and this grid, we need this grid to have uh, three row definitions. So the first one is going to be, uh, so the grid is going to have a definition like this. Asterisk two asterisk then auto, and so next right next is a, a box view. Um, so let's do box view, and this box view will have a uh, row span of three because we want it to uh, fill all the space. And this this box view now we want to give it a background. So let's do box view dot background background and this background we want to give it a, a linear brush a linear brush 
uh, let's add some gradient stop gradient collection uh, stop collection then we can now add uh, two gradient stop the first one uh, each of them are of uh, black color so one is darker the other one is lighter so this one starts from zero this end at one so if we save this now you see that, that we have our gradients uh, showing on the screen okay so now that we have this uh, the next thing that we will need to add uh, in the first row is the um, is the path so this is what we are going to do if we if you if you have uh, a uh, a design tool like this what you can do is to export this export this uh, design and then ex export it as, P as SVG and then open it in a notepad so you export this part and open it in a notepad so uh, if we, if i open the uh the other curve now and open it in notepad let me show you what, what we're going to have so as you can see this is the this is the other curve and this is the data path so you just need to copy this uh data uh right here okay so but i already have it copied and uh, all we're going to do is to put it inside the path so let's start with the grid because we're still going to put some things in the grid this is the first grid uh in the first column uh in the first row rather then we're going to have a, a path and just say data and this data will be what we have copied uh from the path so i'm going to paste this right in here okay uh, and i want to set something so i want to set the aspect uh to fill and we want the fill color to be this orange color and let's close this so if you save this now you can see that we have that uh showing for us there okay so the next thing that we need is we need two uh images uh for the search and the menu so those two images will also be right in this uh in this grid so the first image is going to be menu and uh, we're going to let it have the start horizontal to be start and this other one the horizontal option is going to be end so if we save this now so we can say we have uh the two images uh, right at the top here so those that's this is all we need to have in uh on the first the first row so in the second in the second row now we're going to ha have a stack layout so this stack layout uh will be in the second row and uh we're going to give it a negative margin of uh 140. so second row had to be at the center give it a negative margin at the top of minus of uh of 140 negative 140 and a spacing of 30. all right so right inside here now uh we want a grid that grid um the first thing is stack layout is going to be a grid and this grid uh we're going to put uh the an ellipse inside so the grid has a width request and height request of 210 inside this grid now we're going to put an ellipse the ellipse is going to be white stroke thickness is two and uh, aspect is fill so if i save this now we can see what we have so we see this is the negative margin that is at work if i remove this negative margin here now and save you see that this thing that will go down okay so you can see so that's the effect of the negative margin so i'm going to add it back save so we have it up uh right in that place okay so um the next thing is now to have the text so those are very simple uh texts so i'm just gonna uh, put them right here in the stack layout uh, and the button so the first text is saying are you hungry like you said second text is saying don't wait with some of this uh, attributes then we have a button that says order now so if i save so you see uh this is what we have 
uh, one thing that we forgot to add is the image right here. So let's quickly add the image. So right after this, we need to add an image. Uh, we give it a name. We we'll call it banner banner image. So this is the image, call it banner image. Uh, we we'll set it to the source uh, to this uh, image source. This with request and height request. So if we save this now. So you can see our image is right here. All right. So the last thing we need to do on this page is to add uh, the the uh, the quick peek at the, at the uh, down here. So that's going to, that will go into this into the uh, third row. So we are going to start with a stack layout for that. So still right in the grid. So this is going to be in the third row as you can see grid dot row equals two and uh, the first thing that we need to do is to add a label uh that is uh called quick pick so with all these attributes if i save this now you can see uh we have this because, because this this row is set to auto so that's why you have uh, it's down right like that so the next thing is we want to put this uh we want to add a stack a, a scroll view and inside that scroll view, we are going to have a stack layout. So we have a scroll view horizontal like this. So we want to be able to scroll that item. Now I'm going to make use of a stack layout and use make use of the bindable property. You can make use of the collection view if you like, but for this purpose, I would like to make use of a stack layout. I don't have any uh, particular reason for doing that. That is just what I feel like doing uh, using uh, for this uh, part. You can make use of a collection view uh, if you want to. So I'm going to make use of a, a stack layout right inside here and make use of the bindable, prop, bindable layout item source and set it to this pix. So that pix is, uh, uh, is a list of, uh, of item that is coming from the view model. All right, so right inside here, we, I'm going to set the uh, bindable, bindable layout dot item, item template and set the data template. So this data template is very simple. Uh, we're going to have a grid. The grid will have uh, two column definitions and column spacing of 15. And inside the grid, the first thing that we want to uh, have is uh, a rectangle. We want to make it of a rectangle. So the rectangle will have this field color. The center has this uh, width and height request. So if I save this now, you should see something so you can see this is coming gradually and this is because we already have two items in this pick. So as we are adding items to the data templates, we are seeing uh, this right here. And all this is coming from the view model uh, that, we, that we created and this is the view model. This is the pick. You can see uh, these are the information. So very soon you see uh, this text and, the, and this description uh, showing up right here. Alright, so uh, the next thing I want to do is to now in the first in the first uh, column let's add an image so the image will have uh we will bind it to uh the to image so this is the image that we're binding to so this is image right here that is coming from pick is a string so that image will have a uh, source binding to image this with requests and height requests horizontal option with option let's save so as you can see, uh, this is coming up. And after this now, we now are going to use a stack layout to bind, uh, to stack two proper two uh, labels together. That one, the first one will take the title, the second one will take the description. So let's save. So as you can see now, uh, we have this uh, scrolling right here. Well, if we click this now, this is not working. And normally we also need to have uh, a rotation uh, right here. All right, so let's quickly fix that before we design the second page. So I'm going to stop this now. Uh, in order for us to have uh, a rotating uh, image, just like we saw, we're going to do this in uh, the code behind. So let's go to uh, the code behind of uh, main page. So main page.xml.cs. So right here, uh, what we want to first of all do is to create a method. So let's do private 
async void and let's call this uh, rotate image and what we want to do because we our image already has a name so we want to say uh, while true we want to have an infinite loop so while true uh, what we want to happen is to await uh, banner image dot relative rotate to uh, we want to rotate it to 3 360 uh, we want the rotation to take on 10,000 milliseconds that is like 10 seconds and then uh, we want the easing to be linear easing that's linear all right so now that we have this the next thing that we have to do is to now uh, run the animation so let's just do something like tax dot run so we want this to run on a separate thread so that it will not block the ui thread so rotate image so that's the reason for doing using it uh wrapping inside a tax uh like this okay so this will call we call this method and you know, do the rotation for us but before we test i want us to add uh, another page uh, so let's add new new item it's going to be content page so we're going to call that other page other page and the next thing i want us to do is to also add a view model uh, a new class so let's call it other view model all right so this other view model is going to be public and it's going to also inherit from uh, the base view model all right so in this in this other view model we're going to have uh, we're going to have some things here uh, to work with uh, the first one is to have a method to get uh, some data so we want some data to be on the screen uh for our menu then uh we also now need the menu list uh property that we're going to bind uh, this is the menu list property and of course we now have to create a uh constructor let's just see tough and inside the constructor what we just want to do is to get all the menu okay so like this and lastly we need to create uh, a command for our back button on that page because if we check if we look at here we need a back button here so and when we click on it it has to perform an option so uh, we need to create a command this is a command high command uh set it to a new command and what we're just doing is just to pop the uh page all right so uh before we now proceed also in the in the main view model i want to uncomment out this this command is uh, going to trigger when you click on the uh, other button so i to go to the other page uh, right here so i'm going to run this now so by the time i run this now you see that our mission is working well and then once we now design uh, the the second page in the other page we're going to make use of uh, a carousel view and also try to animate uh, the content of the carousel view so uh, stay with me to see how you can you know go into the views of a carousel view and animate it all right so you can see our uh, image is currently rotating now if i click on other now we have uh, this new page and this is the other page so let's go to the other page now and let's start to design this so the first thing is to remove the uh, navigation bar so i'm going to remove that that is gone and also remove this content and save and that is also gone all right so uh the first thing is to do the binding context of this page we're going to set it to uh the other view model that we created so and next uh is to now start to define the uh 
uh, the page. So now this this our page is going to be divided into two into two uh, rows. This is the first one. This is the second one. Uh, this one is going to be a fixed a fixed uh, size of uh, 130. Uh, we don't want to be more than 130. And the rest is this is going to take the rest of the space. All right. So let's let's do that. So we have a grid fixed uh, height of 130 on the first row and the second row takes the rest of the space and like you see we have uh, a box view uh, for our background so the same box view the same uh, the same colors that we use the photo i'm using so i'm just replicating it and in this this case this box view is going to be uh, in two rows so it's going to span across two rows so i'm going to save this now so we have this uh, currently. All right. So uh, just like we have in the first one, uh, we uh, in the first page, we now need to use the uh, the header and add, have a path data to it. So path, let's set the data and the data. I am I have copied the data out. Uh, and I'm going to paste it right here. So that is the data. If I save this now, we can we we are not seeing anything. But I, so I think I have to uh, let's continue. I have to change the color because uh, there is no color currently. So I'm going to put aspect fill and add a color, the orange color to it. So aspect is going to be fill. The fill color is going to be this uh, yellowish color. So as you can see, now we have the shape. This data is what is defining the shape. All right. So next to it is a stack layout that's going to stack uh, the image button for our back button and the label that says menu. So we have a stack layout here. Inside it, we have uh, an image button that's going to uh, uh, the source is back and we have a label here that says menu all right so next to it we have the main work is it's now the carousel view and that's going to be in the second the second uh, row yeah so let's do uh carousel view uh the, it's going to be in the second row and then we're going to do the item source find the item source to uh, what we have in our view model that is the menu list uh, we want to be able to pick uh, to see uh, some part of the carousel view so we want the item to spill so if I so we're going to say pick area inserts set it to 80 then we are going to use negative margin here also and set it to uh, minus 20 at the top like that so I'm going to save this now. We are not seeing anything yet. So the next thing that we want to do is to set how we want our item to display. So we want a linear item display. So let's do a uh, carousel view dot items layout. So it's going to be linear, horizontal, and uh, spacing is 10. So next to it is to now create our data template now our data template is very simple uh, we have let me just explain the data template here we're going to have a grid so we're going to have a grid uh, the parent grid that contains all of this then inside right inside here we're going to have this grid this background the one at the background here we're going to do that one first and divide it into three set these uh, two items there and then add another grid on top of it all right so let's see how it's done so we have a parent grid uh and we want the it request to just to be uh five uh, so let's quickly do uh carousel view dot items templates and we'll do data templates and right inside here we have a grid 
height of this width of this center I'm saving right now nothing yet so we need to uh, add a grid so that's just a parent grid so right inside this grid we're going to have another grid I divide into three uh, rows and this one uh, have a uh, margin of 50 top and bottom we want it we want that margin uh, to to have to to go uh, down because if you look at if you look at the design here you can see that you're not seeing the back side of this uh, of this grid so we are pushing it down by 50 okay so right inside there we're going to use a, a, a box view so let's please let's use a box view and save so we have a box view right here as you can see uh column span row span is three this is the background and this is the corner radius if i remove this this uh margin now i want you to see what i'm talking about i'm saving it now so you can see that this is pushing to the top we are using the margin to uh push it down uh both up at the top and at the bottom uh a little all right so inside this inside this grid now uh we want to have a stack layout and in that stack layout we're going to have we're going to have two labels So this is what I just brought in. So this is stack layout. We have uh, it's going to be in the first row uh, with this padding and two labels. If one uh, binding to title, the other one binding to description. If I save this now, you should see the the title and the description. So you can all see we are having title and description uh, right here. Okay. So then the next thing is uh, another stack layout that was going to have. It's going to have. Uh, the the price and the button so this is under stack layout with price and this is the uh button that says hard so this is the stack layout it's going to be in the second row uh, sorry the third row so we are we are omitting the first uh row in this part because the first row is going to be at this place we have the image is going to stay but we're not going to use uh the first row so i'm going to save this now as you can see we have the price and the button that says hard right here all right so uh, that is it for that grid so we now need another grid so this grid is going to be similar to the grid that we used the first time so you can see this is the grid that defines this particular grid now is a grid that defines uh this gray area so we're going to put another grid in this parent grid and then uh it's going to be at the top of this grid so the image is not going to be inside this grid it's going to be in another grid and it's going to be in, the, in this parent grid right here which will now be at the top of this uh grid so right here this is going to be the grid so it's, it's exactly what we did before uh, in the previous we have an ellipse white and we have an image inside the grid with some of these properties if i save now you can see now that we have uh, the image showing for all uh, the items. All right. So now at this stage, what we now need to do is to animate this. Uh, animate this when when you scroll. So in order to do that, let's set the position change for our carousel view. So right at the top here, we want to set the pos position change. And set it to carousel position change i'm going to go to definition to generate this for me so what you can do is if you say position change equals carousel position change for you to be able to auto generate this uh, event and just right click and say go to definition then you will have this all right so i'm going to stop i'm going to stop this uh now so that we can write some code so this is now the code uh behind of the other page this is the other.page, other.zamel.cs. And right in this place, uh, what we're just going to do uh, is very uh, simple. We're going to use a little hack 
to get all the items in the carousel view so let's just say the carousel so our carousel equals uh, the sender as carousel carousel view so that is our carousel now what we now want to do is to get all the visible views so let's say our views equals carousel dot visible views so there's a property called visible views it's going to give us a list of all the views so this is going to be views list of all the views that are visible so what we're now going to do is first of all check uh if if uh the views dot count if it is greater than uh greater than zero so that means that we have is greater than zero that means we have visible views so if that is true then what to do for each for each of our view in views so for each of the view what i want to do because if you check our view you see that uh, our image right here has a name called menu menu img so we want to get this image and rotate it so what we're going to do uh let's go back to other page so what we're going to do is to save uh img equals view the current view dot find find by name of type image and the name that we want to find is menu img so once uh we're able to find that if there is any animation going on currently we want to cancel it so we want to use view extension extension dot cancel animation for img so if there's any animation first of all cancel it then we are now going to do the same thing that we did in the main uh page let's now do uh, tax that run because we don't want our UI try to block dot run so we're going to put an anonymous method right inside here async using this lambda expression let's do await img dot relative rotate to 360 we want this to do at uh, 5000 milliseconds and we want the easing to be bounce out bounce out like this so this is all we need to do uh, for this if i save now and run this uh, we should be able to see uh, the image rotates as we change position of uh, the carousel so that is a trick that we just uh just did there to rotate it so just to give a visual clue uh now, so one of the use case for this is if you want to uh change the image you can also do that right here you can change this image source so if i click on other now so you can see there's no animation but if i if i if i you know change the view and see all the visible uh elements are rotating if i change this now you can see this rotates like this if i change back to the first one you can see how it's rotating so sometimes one of the use case for this is uh maybe once you select an item you want to change this image to maybe a gif image that is showing how the menu is being prepared you know maybe adding items to the to the plate one by one you know, and stuff like that so there are several use cases that you can uh, apply this to all right guys so that's it for this uh video if you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up uh like this video and also smash that subscribe button if you are yet to subscribe to this channel click on that uh, bell icon to get notification every time i upload new contents like this and if you are yet to take advantage of the uh, discount of the master class make sure you do that uh now uh you have 24 hours to get that discount before it goes back to uh, the previous price all right thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.